It was Arnazello, which is a literary journal out of Bellevue College in, in Washington State, and they published my poem, The Color of Joy. And it, it, well, it was exciting. I, you know, I really didn't expect to get published. I was a student at the time, and my professor had encouraged everybody to send in at least three poems, what they thought might be their best poems for that, that term. And so it was a big surprise to get accepted. And um, uh, <laughs> I, told, I got a copy of it for my sister because I was, I don't know, I was just so surprised and kind of excited about it. And it was about a memory that she and I had shared. And I thought she might like to see it. Well, for my birthday that year, she, she gave me a t-shirt that had my name and the page number from the journal on it. So it became kind of a family joke because they would just, the rest of the family started calling me page 40. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was kind of silly, but it was fun, and, and um, you know, as a student, it was exciting to get published. Were you undergraduate at the time? I was an undergraduate, yes, yeah, and I, I was taking a creative writing, an introduction to creative writing class. Undergraduate magazine that you were published in, or it, was it, it broader? Was, it was open to everybody, but they did allow undergraduates to publish there, and they encouraged them to send their work in. So although it was an exclusively a, a student magazine, it was, you know, it was intended for them to submit to as well as others. Let's see, as an editor, I, I think it's really given me insight into understanding what other editors go through and what they might look for. I think by having, by reading a lot of work that comes in, I've, I've begun to move away from writing what I think will be emotionally oh, powerful work that ends up really turning out to be kind of narcissistic and I didn't realize that at the time and 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 now having sat in the editor's chair I realize that the editor is looking for things that have some kind of significance to the readership and so my perspective has changed and that doesn't mean that I don't write things that might be based in personal experience but I try to find a way to make it relevant to others and not have it just be kind of about myself and um, so, uh, you know, stepping outside of the purely writer in front of screen or paper, uh, you know, I've moved into a different perspective of thinking more about the reader. So it's broadened my perspective significantly. And I think it's taught me to write in a more nuanced way instead of being really kind of direct and straightforward to, to, to really think more in subtleties, to Oh, to just kind of make my compositions, um, you know, uh, oh gosh, a little more layered, I guess. Doubt is really hard. Doubt is, is a huge part of, of what writers do. And when pieces over and over don't get accepted, I do go back and look at it. Unfortunately, what I've done in the past is to move toward fine-tuning it more until it gets overworked, and, and sometimes I'll edit the heart out of a piece. I'll edit whatever exciting impulse it started with out of it, and, and then, of course, editors are even less interested. And so I just have to abandon it for a while, and that's usually the best thing I can do. And then maybe six months or a year later, I can see why that piece or those pieces aren't getting accepted. But it also forces me to move on, to try new things. And that's, that's another really, you know, when, when I have a lot of doubt, for me the best antidote has been to let go and move on to something new and, and wait until I have enough perspective to really be able to see you know, if if that doubt is warranted, and it usually is in my case, unfortunately, but <laughs> the, the editors are rejecting it for a, re a reason, usually. <laughs> well, ideally we like to think that all of our work stands on its own against all the other work that was submitted, and in some cases that's true. I know when I've read for um, 
Prairie Schooner and other publications. Uh, I, I try not to look at who submitted it or what their you know bio is or their letter or anything like that and just look at the work first. But I know not everybody does that. And, and, and sometimes when I do, you know, see who's submitted, I'm sure subconsciously I'm affected by that. Um, and, you know, so that said, uh, I, I think that it's probably very likely that other editors and readers look at those things, notice those things, and, and, and that influences their decision. So if they see that somebody has been published someplace else, that, that may be part of you know, why they give more attention to a piece. But um, I think also that it affects other things in you know, kind of a writing career. Um, you know, when one goes to then publish a book, the, the publisher will look at the acknowledgments page and see, did any other editors think these pieces were worthwhile? and so those publishing credits help. One great piece of advice that I got from Judith Kitchen years ago was to start with the publications that are publishing student work or local publications or things like that where it's, it, you're not pitted against some of the top people publishing today so that one can get a little bit you know more exposure and practice and ability to get published and if you know if we're out there and we're only pitted against the people who are masters of the craft then you know we're, we're in the wrong playing field it would be like asking um, you know a, 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 to use a sports analogy and I don't usually but it would be like asking a, a, a child learning people to go out onto a major league baseball field and try to compete and, and, and that would just be defeatist and discouraging if anything. I, I, I don't think of it in terms of easier to get into. The population who could submit to that is enormous. It's really huge. You know, if you look at something like, oh gosh, Prairie Schooner or, you know, any of the other top journals in, in, in the world right now, they're, of, of course, they're getting a lot of, of entries, many of which probably aren't at a level to be published. But of the ones that are, the, the number that are really of that quality to get published in that publication I'm guessing might actually be fewer than what some of the top undergraduate journals get. So it might not necessarily be easier. And I say, I, I think that's an important point to make because when somebody gets published in a, in a journal like that, that's a huge coup. It's a big deal. It's not, it's not something to be looked at kind of, you know, like, oh, well, that's an easy publication to get in and, and be dismissive. I, I, think, I think it's something to celebrate, and, and it's something exciting. And, and so <laughs> if I'm not going on too long, I just want to make one other point about that, and that is I believe that people do read those journals. They want to know what's the next wave, what's coming up, and not just editors but other writers. I think that we all want to see what are the fresh voices saying. So that, you know, to get, again, to get published in that journal says, one, you're a fresh voice, two, you've competed against a huge um, you know, population to get in there, and three, you've got something exciting to say that those editors were really interested in. So all three of those, again, I think are a major coup. Both, yes. Um, uh, it's always fun to open up the journal, a journal, and the ones I subscribe to, I go to the table of contents first, and I do look to see if there's anyone I know who got published, and I read their pieces first. I don't, I'm not one of those who are really good about reading front to back and reading it as the editor intended, but um, and th and that's really exciting. And then usually, I'll send them a note, or sometimes I'll even share it on Facebook because you know I'm excited for them, and I want I want to bring attention to the work of people you know I know who are doing good work <laughs> and but on the other hand I've also read things I loved and and maybe later met those people and in some cases that's almost not 
that's so great because I get a little starstruck. I know like Eva Salidas, who is an Alaskan writer, she's a, a, a whale scientist. Uh, I, I met her at AWP and she was absolutely lovely and gracious and I could barely say a word because <laughs> I like her writing so much that I got a little bit tongue-tied and that's happened with other writers and then one time I I read a piece by Stephen Dunn and I wrote my first um, my first fan mail to someone and I I had read it, it was a poem and I had read it to everyone in my family I sort of cornered them and forced them to listen to this poem and they all loved it but um, my son wanted to look at it and read it himself and he was reading it and he was eating his breakfast at the same time and and you know he just he really got into it and really liked it and ended up sort of like tipping his plate and the egg dripped on the poem <laughs> and so I wrote to Stephen Dunn and I said um, I called his poem a kick-ass poem and um, and and said you know please don't take the you know egg stains on your poem as <laughs> any sign of disrespect and he wrote back a very nice note well later I met David Huddle or talked to David Huddle and those two are good friends and he gave me the hardest time for writing Stephen Dunn who's won the Pulitzer and you know I mean he's one of the major poets in the world today and he said I can't believe you called this poem a kick-ass poem and I felt like an idiot you know <laughs> because it wasn't the most articulate or complimentary thing and then later his wife uh, Lindsay told me oh trust me Stephen Dunn would have appreciated that and I don't know if she was saying that to make me feel better or if David really was just teasing me and that that was okay but it was kind of fun you know sort of um, how that little network uh, grew and I still have never met Stephen Dunn and probably never will but um, I you know I still love that poem <laughs>